So you've decided to download Pokemon TCG Live. Clearly you're going through some things right now, so I'll keep this as safe of a space as I can. As with any ongoing live service game, getting started in PDCGL can be a bit overwhelming for new players. While I won't be teaching you how to play the Pokemon TCG, there's an in-game tutorial for that, I will be showing you how to maximize your first few days and weeks, so you don't make a huge mistake like spending crystals to get coins. Eagle-eyed viewers will know that I already made a video like this previously, but a few things have changed since then, so it felt like the perfect time to update all of you. We begin in a much happier place, the world of PDCGO. If you played the previous TCG game before it shut down forever in June 2023, you can migrate many of your cards to live. All you have to do is make sure you log in with the exact same Pokemon Trainer Club account used for the Pokemon Trading Card Game Online, and you're good to go. Keep in mind that this step is completely optional, and Live won't even give you the option if you never played PDCGO. Essentially, by choosing to migrate, up to four copies of every card you had in the previous game will make the trip to PDCGL, as well as several cosmetics like deck boxes, sleeves, and coins. And if you had any unopened packs in your account, you'll find yourself starting with a healthy heaping of crystals, which are the toughest currency to earn in Live. Back when I did my original newbie video for PDCGL, PDCGO still existed. But now that it's gone forever and never coming back, you don't have a choice. So just rip off the Defiance Band-Aid and migrate. Oh, and if you accidentally decline the migration, you can go into the settings and migrate later. For the first 10 minutes or so of your Pokemon TCG Live journey, you'll be guided by Professor Fur. He'll teach you the ins and outs of the Pokemon trading card game, give you a free deck from the Battle Pass, and force you to spend 200 of your crystals on a pack. Doing those five lessons in the tutorial is completely optional, so if you're familiar with the Pokemon TCG, feel free to skip them. Otherwise, I highly recommend doing all five as they teach you how to play the game. Once you've done all that, you'll find yourself at this screen. Depending on when you're playing TCG Live, the imagery will change. I'm filming this in June 2024, so it's Sinistra on the ranked ladder. Regardless of when you're playing, though, the reward for entering Quick Lead will always be 500 credits, which are used to craft specific cards. I also played before July 4th, which gave me an extra 600 crystals, which are used to buy the premium battle pass and items from the shop. When all the messages are gone, you'll finally have complete, unsupervised access to Pokemon TCG Live. At this point, you'll be at Quick Lead on the ranked ladder with 520 crystals and 1,750 credits in your account. The first thing you want to do is go into the settings by clicking the three dots in the top right. To say Pokemon TCG Live is horribly optimized would be an understatement. My advice is to go into the settings and make sure Reduce Board VFX is checked. Not only will it reduce the load on your computer, but the in-battle effects have a knack for making you nauseous if you stare at them for too long. This is where you'll also be able to choose your resolution, make live windowed, and keep the music and sound effects turned down. Just, uh, just don't accidentally delete your account. Yeah, I don't know why they made the button so big either. Unfortunately, for those playing on your phone, there isn't a workaround for battery drain and overheating. They have been releasing updates over the past two years to lessen this major issue, but it still happens regularly. If you're one of the lucky ones who experienced this, well, at least you have a hand warmer in the winter. While you'll probably also want to mute your opponent after you battle someone who keeps spamming the thumbs down emote during your turn, you can't actually do that despite us asking for two and a half years. Oh, and you can't skip your opponent's victory animation at the end of the game no matter how much you might want to. Every player in TCG Live gets eight free decks by default until March 2025. They are Charizard EX, Chen Pao EX, Golden Go EX, Giratina V-Star, Zoroark V-Star, Lugia V-Star, Mewtwo EX, and Roaring Moon EX. Plus, new players get that Arcanine EX deck from the tutorial for free as well. Additionally, you receive two free decks on the Battle Pass, which changes every two to three months when a new set is released. With Twilight Master Raid's Battle Pass, which runs until July 31st when Shrouded Fable comes out, you receive an Ogre Pawn EX deck on the basic Battle Pass, which Professor Fur gives you automatically during the tutorial. Then on the premium battle pass for Shotted Fable, it's a Dragapult EX deck. Basically, TCG Live gives every new player 10 free decks, and most of them are really good. Depending on when you're watching this video, though, things could look a little different. Essentially, if you play before July 31st, it'll be Ogre Pawn EX and Dragapult EX decks for free. Between August 1st and September 11th, it'll be whatever's on the Shotted Fable battle pass. And between September 12th and mid-November, it'll be whatever's on the Stellar Crown battle pass. Once a battle pass is gone, you can't get the previous rewards, so at the very least, make sure you log into PDCGL every couple of months. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, obviously, is play with the free decks. This way you can get a hang of the Pokemon TCG, learn the rules, and determine which archetype you like the best. Without doing nearly enough testing, this is how I'd rank the 9 default free decks. Charizard EX is in first place, followed close behind by Chen Pao and Golden Go, with Giratina V-Star and Roaring Moon EX also great choices. In order to reach Great League, though, you'll need to upgrade the free decks. Thankfully, it doesn't cost very much at all. 
In the description of this video, you'll find lists for three upgraded decks, Charizard, Ludia, and Chen Pao. I've kept the crafting cost as low as possible, since new players will only have a few thousand credits at their disposal right away. The meta changes every two to three months when a new set is released, so I've also taken that into consideration. Charizard EX will likely be the best deck on PDCGO when you're watching this video, so you probably want to start there. First up, this Charizard EX deck upgrade will cost roughly 2,000 credits. It all depends on whether or not you have Prime Catcher, which is arguably the best A spec in the game and is always worth the 600 credits to craft. If you do have Prime Catcher in your account, the total is down to just 1,400 credits. You can check out my free deck upgrades guide playlist for more details on upgraded free decks. But essentially, the strategy here is to get Rotom V down turn 1 and use its ability to draw 3 cards. Then evolve into Pidgeot EX to keep grabbing whatever card you want turn after turn, as well as evolve into Charizard EX, which is your main attacker. Moving to Lugia, the problem with the free version is that it lacks a heavy hitter. Throw in a 3-3 line of Cinchino, now you can take big 1-hit KOs. If you already have Prime Catcher, this version costs under 1800 credits to craft, though Legacy Energy is a much better A spec as it opens the possibility to include other attackers. But remember, these lists aren't perfect. They're designed to give you a jumping off point that doesn't completely drain your credits. And finally, Chen Pao EX. If you already have Prime Catcher, it's just 940 credits to make this build, and 600 of that is from Iron Hands EX. It can be a little scary playing such low counts of your important cards, so don't be afraid to remove the Iron Hands EX and Lightning Energy and add in a copy of Arctabax plus a third Bax Caliber while you learn how to play it. Because TCG Live forces you to buy that pack during the tutorial, there's only 520 crystals in your account. It costs 600 crystals to unlock the premium battle pass, so you'll have to do two daily quests. Alternatively, if you don't want to wait two days, you can play on the ranked ladder until you reach Poker League, which grants you 200 crystals as well as 500 credits. Getting to Poker League is fairly easy. Thanks to the rebalance earlier this year, all you have to do is win four games. Losses don't penalize you, so if you go four wins and 96 losses, you're still good. Anyways, the daily quests. While both help level up the battle pass, gaining you more rewards, the right quest is what you care about the most. By completing it, you'll gain 60 crystals and 500 experience for the battle pass. The left quest is less important, only offering up 50 coins and 300 experience. Coins are by far the most useless currency in PDCGL, and they also happen to be the most abundant. They're only used for things like deck boxes and sleeves and avatar clothing, not cards or packs. You only have the ability to change each quest once per day, so if the first one doesn't behoove you, switch it up and hope for something easier. Daily quests range from something easy like play one item card or deal 100 damage in a single hit, to impossible quests like complete two matches without conceding. Keep in mind that you have to manually collect the rewards from daily quests, just like the ranked ladder, so you will have to go back to the Battle Pass tab and click on them after completing them. Once you have 600 crystals in your account, get the Premium Pass. Never ever buy the Premium Pass Plus for 1800 crystals, it is an absolute waste. Only ever get the 600 crystal Premium Pass. As for the benefits, you get a brand new free deck at tier 0, plus 1500 credits. At the time of recording, Dragapult TX is the free deck, but that could be different depending on when you're playing. Additionally, by reaching the end of the Premium Battle Pass, you'll get back 500 of the 600 crystals you spent. And since I know people will ask, yes, the Premium Pass is retroactive. So even if you're at level 25 of the Battle Pass, then buy the Premium Pass, you'll get all the Premium Rewards up to that point. And for the final thing new players should do, it's playing Ranked. While you may be tempted to begin your journey in Casual, I suggest diving right into Ranked. That's because you'll face players of a similar skill level. Casual doesn't have any sort of skill-based matchmaking, so you have the potential to face a tryhard playing the best deck in format fully blinged out. At least in Ranked, there's some protections. Earlier this year, the developers reworked how Ranked play works. Now it's much easier to enter new Ranked leagues, and the rewards you get for entering each league are worth chasing. Just like with daily quests, you have to manually collect your Ranked rewards. So when you get the animation of reaching a new lead, click on the Ranked ladder and click on the prize box to claim your rewards. At the very least, play 5 ranked matches each month. This way you'll receive the latter end rewards. While they're weak at first, quick lead just gives you a pack of the most recent set, getting to higher leagues is also really weak. But you can still get a few packs and a little bit of each currency. Also, when the month ends, you'll be sent back down to the previous league, so keep that in mind. And those are my 6 things new players should be doing first in Pokemon TCG Live. But there's a lot more to cover when it comes to live, so let me address some frequently asked questions I see pop up all the time. First, how to find alternate arts of cards. Let's say you just opened a pack and inside was a full art Charizard EX, but you go to add it to a deck and can't find it. PDCGL layers alternate arts together, so you have to search for Charizard EX, click on it, then click available to see the different arts you own. 
Crafting a card is a similar but also different process. Importing a deck list is the easiest way, as PDCGL will show you the cards you're missing, allowing you to click on them and craft them. Otherwise, to craft a card manually, you have to go to Filters, select All, type in the card you want, click on the card you want, select the art you want under Available, then click Exchange, then Confirm Exchange. Yeah, like I said, it's a lot easier to just import a deck list and craft the missing cards. Redeeming code cards should be easy, but Apple makes it a little more difficult than it needs to be. Because of Apple's rules around codes, you can't actually use your iPhone or iPad camera to scan code cards in-game. You instead have to use the Code Card Redemption website. Android users, meanwhile, can redeem code cards in Live itself by scanning the QR code. Same with anyone on their computer with a webcam. To do this inside PDCGL, go to the shop, click redeem, and either use a camera or manually enter each code. Next, how to buy a bundle. After the premium battle pass, you should only be spending your crystals on the Shadow Rider VMAX or Maridon EX League battle decks. Unfortunately, finding them isn't as easy as you might think. You have to go to the shop, click on View All Bundles, then scroll all the way down to November 2023 for Maridon EX, or July 2022 for Shadow Rider to buy them for 1,250 crystals. I have a video explaining why these are the only things you should be buying, but basically it's the best value when it comes to farming credits. A new feature that took two years to come to live, even though it was in PDCGO, is a battle log. Before, new players were basically told to go to hell when it came to learning cards they hadn't seen before. Now you can click this button underneath the scoreboard and see everything that's happened in the current duel. For you newbies, the most important part of the battle log is being able to click on cards. If your opponent plays something you're unfamiliar with, you can go to the battle log, find it, click on it, and read all about it. But what if you want to play a new competitive tier 1 deck? If you're wanting to branch off like a pseudo wudo and create something new that's actually just a copy of something somebody else built, you'll want to head over to Limitless TCG, which I'll put the link for in the description. Here you can see results from real life and online tournaments, giving you an idea of the current best decks in format. Best of all, you can import these lists to live and immediately start playing with them, provided you own all of the cards. And if you don't own the cards, you can test unowned decks against the AI by clicking Test Deck. Additionally, you can subscribe to me here for gameplay videos of new decks or follow me on Twitch to watch me play them live. And how do you add someone to your friends list? Click on Profile, then click on Friends to the left of Avatar Customization. Select Add Friend, then type in their username and wait for them to accept the request. Just keep in mind that you'll have to restart PDCGL after they accept the friend request because PDCGL is a well-made game. And you can't do expanded friend battles, just standard. And you can't turn the timer off for friend battles either. Speaking of Expanded, how do you find it? At the time of this recording, Expanded is a forgotten format, only supporting cards from Sun and Moon, Sword and Shield, and Scarlet and Violet, with no release date for Black and White or X and Y two and a half years after PDCGL originally released. If you do want to play in this stunted format, though, click on Casual on the homepage, then click the Standard Badge. You'll now be in the Expanded Beta. By clicking on Dex, you'll be able to build an Expanded deck for this format as well. Furthermore, you might be wondering what happened to some of your cards, especially if you migrated from PDCGO. In order to see all of the cards you own, go to Decks. When building a deck, go to Filters and select All under Format. Now you can see the cards you have from every generation, though remember, cards from Black and White and X and Y aren't supported yet. You can also see all of the expanded cards by clicking All under Show Cards. And finally, which pack codes should you buy? In my opinion, buying codes isn't worth it unless you have a lot of money. If you do, can I, can I have some? But PDCGL gives you plenty of free decks and packs that spending real world money isn't really necessary. If you do want to juice your account though, the rule of big toe is the smaller the set, the better it is. That makes Pokemon Go the most economical choice, letting you get four copies of cards faster at a credit farm quicker. Otherwise, Celebrations is the best set as it only has 50 total cards. But each code can run you anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar each, sucking you completely dry. Yes, I know the economy in live is confusing, especially for new players, which is why I tell you not to buy codes. Anyways, hopefully this video helped you out. But if there's any lingering questions you have about TCG Live, use the comments below. And make sure you like the video so I can expose myself to as many people as possible.